How's it going guys? Uh, this video is going to be special because what's inside of this bag is something that I was looking forward to receiving because I haven't seen, as soon as I saw pictures of this thing, I was like, yes, sign me up, I'm gonna get it done. <laughs> let's just let's just see if um, I'm up for the challenge. What do I have here is probably one of the worst condition devices uh, after salt water damage that I have ever seen. Check this out. This thing is beat up heavily. The more I thought about it after, I, uh, after this unit arrived, the more I'm inclined to uh, scrapping that idea and fixing it because, well, it's just, it's been somewhere else before for sure. Somebody tried to fix it before, 100%. Uh, you don't even need to know what I'm talking about to be able to see that uh, these components had been moved. Like this definitely wasn't supposed to sit sideways. Uh, all of these had been flown. The chip had been removed for who knows what reason. I don't know the condition and the state of these traces underneath the mask in some places. Like nothing else, I would want to fix this thing if it wasn't for a couple of little uh, issues that I found. I'm not worried about corroded spots and things like that, um, but I am worried about the components missing. On top of everything is Chips Bank 2093. So this thing most likely doesn't even have any mix. It's just got a layout according to the database uh, for this controller. Maybe they were so bad that they just corroded right off. Oh, there. Yep. Corrosion, guys. Corrosion kicks in. Wow. Look at that. So they... So the corrosion kicked in. Took away these headers. Which is pretty bad. Considering that we need them. Right? Like, I don't, I'm not going to try to rely on, on connectivity between this pad here and this thing here. It's, it, may, it may look like you have a header. But when your header is moving like this, and, you, and your signal is dependent on the contact that's being made right here, and not like right there, I'm going to say that chances are, sooner or later you will be in trouble. Yeah, so these headers corroded pretty badly. And probably that was the reason why the other shop gave up on it. Look, another one. This one too? No, so many headers are going out. You might be watching this video and you're, you're thinking to yourself, what are you doing, dude? You're just destroying this guy's flash drive, right? Intentionally. In the way I am, in the way I am destroying it. But also, at the same time, I'm saving it. I'll explain. <laughs> it will soon make sense. I promise you. Yeah, if the header is moving like this, I don't want it to be there. I don't, don't want to take a chance on thinking it's connected and then figuring out that it's not connected. I want to keep only solid headers remaining. And the rest will have to do. You may ask yourself, well, how is this chip going to read properly now that you broke off so many pads, you know, you broke off so many headers? 
I'll show you guys. I will show you how that's done. We want a very clean chip. Um, there are multiple ways on how this can be done. Well, when we're working with NAND protocol, uh, there are signals that these headers represent. Uh, not all of them are in use, first of all, and uh, not all of them need to be connected, obviously. But uh, the essential ones, they need to be connected, and essential ones must be connected. So now that they're broken off, how do we make these connections if those broken connectors, uh, can, broken headers end up being essential? Well, we have uh, a variety of different adapters that we can use, including NAND breakout adapters, spider adapters, adapters like this. The adapter that I'm going to use today is made by Ace Lab, and it looks like this. It's designed to work with the multi board. Kind of dusty already, but you get the idea. It's designed to work with the multi board, which we will come in handy. And it has this uh, manual TSOP48 adapter. It already got a breakout and it's already got all of these headers um, routed out to the pads. We don't need to check the diagram for which headers represent what signal and then you know run them to a specific signal. We can just use this and then everything will line up. The only thing we're missing are the headers. How are we gonna make those headers reappear? Well, let's uh, clean up the chip first and then we'll see. The way they are right now, they're gonna pass nothing as contact, and it's gonna be it's not gonna be it's not gonna be good. So and I'm gonna grab some fresh solder. And obviously we would want flux on both of the sides. All right, that's stage one. And we're gonna collect the extra. You see they're starting to sh they begin to shine they're not perfect yet and uh, I doubt they will ever be perfect again but they're starting to look better definitely starting to look better and up here they, they don't look too bad at all now Okay, that's uh, stage one and a half. Let's try one more round of uh, solder therapy. Only this time we're gonna use the nano tip. Alright, that's uh, probably as far as I'm going to go with uh, cleaning because it's starting to look pretty good to me. Get some alcohol on there and the brush. Just trying to be as gentle as possible. I mean those headers that are still left they were strong enough when I probed them, probed them with uh, tweezers so I wouldn't want to disturb them more and break them so you see the difference right it's starting to come around I mean this is something that we can now work with 
but we're not done yet and I'm gonna bring out my favorite tool of all time the fiberglass scratch pen Wow, this header had it bad. <laughs> it was like starting to lose the the end of it. There are alternative tips, but for some reason I don't have them here with me. We're gonna have to make do with what we got. This is where your patience is gonna go a long way, you know? So what we wanna do, like it's already got enough metal sticking out to make contact. But I know there is more room for us to cut into and get, you know, more certain connection. You see how it came out? It got... It got way further, like way more metal to grab onto uh, now for us. I'm not even going to check if it's an essential signal or not. I'm just going to assume they are all essential. This sign here, that shows the direction of the first pin. Here, it's indicated by this round dot. So we just got to make sure that this triangle matches this. That's how we're going to blend our device. So first things first, we're gonna just uh, lay down the chip and introduce headers to the pads. Make sure that they are all sitting right. And this is a great adapter. The pads are long. You're really not gonna have any chances of messing it up. I'm gonna tack it in with one, two. and three. But well, now let's zoom in and just uh, carefully go one at a time and and push them down flat because some of them are a little bit bent so they won't bond as, as, as easy so I just push them down with the tip
those that are not connected it's better to tin them now than later because well eventually you have to do it so might as well just do it right now this one I want to push it back in a bit that one got bent Alright, at this point I'm just gonna test the integrity of the headers just to make sure that they are not about to pop off. Solid, 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 good, good, solid. This one you can see it's got some childhood trauma now. All of these are solid. Yeah, all of these are good. And now we got to bond it with wire. So those uh, headers that broke off, now we got to make up for it and link them with the thin wire. So I'm going to just go like this. And and so on and so forth. You, you get the idea, right? We're uh, creating our own. headers now that are gonna bond our chips to um, our chips headers to the pad Let's have a look at our final product. I think it came out really nice. Look at that. The multiboard. So just carefully connect this. I got my PC3000 right here. Let's see if we can get the idea of the chip first. Read ID. We got the ID, so it's a Hynix single bank memory. That's good. Uh, let's make. I don't, we don't know what capacity it's supposed to be. So at this point, we can just uh, go into read chip, select direct read, and I'm gonna see what. The data looks like based on uh, page designer and the bit view. Now, I'm not even sure if this data is sorted because I kind of do see some sort of visual patterns here.
Yeah, looking at these lines, they're fairly clean. There is no noise in them. That indicates that it's reading clean. And again, guys, this device didn't fail because it just died um, of its... Because it just decided to die. It, it died because it got uh, salt water damage. And if it got salt water damage, then it's unexpected failure for the device. So it's not like a degraded NAND. Uh, the memory should be fairly stable. I'm going to go ahead and close this up and erase what uh, we were browsing through. Now, this chip is going to get read into a dump file. This may take some time depending on how big this device is, but I was told it's under 8 gigs and it seems here that it's only 2 gig device. So the entire reading process is going to take 7 minutes. Fairly quick, so I'm just still going to put this on fast forward. Uh, and come back to it once the extraction is done. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, build this thing up. So we got uh, the corrected dump already, and uh, we need to figure out what we're going to do with it. So we go to a page designer and browse the bit view. Looking at this here, the fact that it's got like these visual structures that you can pick up on like these uh, fat tables here for example most likely or something along those lines uh, that tells me that there is no XOR involved sector size is 539 we're gonna multiply that by 8 and that's gonna give us a length of uh, our ranges that we're gonna work with so we need to split it up into that amount and then divide this into eight pieces so that they're all equal. These equal pieces, let me clear this, we don't need to add them. We're going uh, uh, we're gonna separate them into data and marker. So 512 for the data. We add that to the, our, our sector uh, description. We got 27 here, but if we look up here, we see that the uh, uh, numbers are changing only here, but this is blank. So likely this is for the ECC, this is the marker. We're going to just take first 16. So I'm going to disproportionately cut it into uh, 16. And I'm going to add these as our marker. Hit apply. And now when we go into page designer and look at things we're gonna see pretty much the same thing only when we get to the end we just have the ECC and nothing else so from here to there that's just our ECC one of the major benefits of uh, this tool is that uh, uh, assembly of the data is assisted with this powerful engine that uh, has so many different options for different controllers that will make your life so much easier to rebuild, save you tons of time. Since we know that our controller is CBM uh, 2093, we're going to select that. Uh, it will even try to automatically figure out the uh, length of the block, but we don't need to guess what that is because we already see that it's 1024. We're going to just select it, we're just going to keep it at 1024. We'll hit apply and let the magic happen. So the translator table gets built uh, with PC3000 and now we have our uh, directory. We have our um, partition that it found, it's FAT16. Uh, it's got a name to it. It's called something something. And uh, even the root is lighting up green. So when we go into the root, uh, the first thing that the unit is going to ask us for is to uh, uh, execute matching versions. I don't really spend time on that. I, I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what that even does. But up here we see the directory. We see our main two subdirectories here. And they um, both have content in them. If we um, open up one of these TIF images, for example, See that the file opens up perfectly fine. Uh, for those who need the service, the link in the description will take you to the intake form where you can request that. Uh, I, again, 
thanks so much for tuning in and uh, watching this miracle happen. I wouldn't really call it a miracle, but I mean, when I first saw this flash drive, I'm like, oh, wow, this will need a miracle. And uh, I'm happy this uh, whole thing turned around so good. So if you um, new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all in the next episode.